What up guys, Bricks 5D here and this is a champion spotlight for Ion Brago, one of the best defensive base champion in Raid Shadow Legends in terms of legendary champions, I mean. He came as a free champion to me, I think as a fusion, I forget, but I think this champion was a fusion, I didn't check that out before the video. But I've since pulled a second one, got dupes of him and outside the clan boss, people think this champion is useless, that's the truth. Once you get this champion built for your clan boss team, where he's most popularly known for keeping your team alive, he works as fine. But once you get an unkillable team for your clan boss, maybe a double monitor or a Demeter team, you kind of put this champion aside and you don't rebuild him for other content in the game. Today, I spent time on Iron Brago and built him, rebuilt him again, so he's no longer a clan boss build. Yes, this is not a clan boss Iron Brago. Although, if you put this current Iron Brago into your clan boss, he would do just the same. I only up the stats, up the speed, up everything to be useful in Doom Tower hard. Yes, and you know that's the most extreme content in the game. That means if he performs excellently in Doom Tower hard, he's gonna work well in Hydra or even in PvP. Yes, so that's where I'm hoping to test him on later. So let me stop rambling about this champion. I'm so hyped about this build because he has been sitting in my vault since I no longer needed him for clan boss. So if you do not know what this champion does, I'll tell you right now, he's best known for this passive. That's what he's best known for. Increases the defense of all allies by 10%, you know, of his defense. So other people increase HP, do healing, do accuracy. He does defense. That's all he's known for. So just by being in the team, even if he dies, your ally still has their defense increased by 10% of his um, defense. So that means if you want him to give a huge percentage, 10% to them, you need to build this champion with the highest amount of defense that you can think of, that you have in your entire artifacts. So that's what he's known for. Now, some people might be prefer to use his other skills to build him accordingly. Example, this A3 that talks about placing provoke. He has a 50% chance of placing provoke for one turn. So if the allies already have um, decrease attack debuff on all allies. No, he also places 50% decrease attack debuff on all allies if they're under increased defense. So, this is conditional. This is a low chance to land, but when it's booked up, it can be up to a 75% chance of placing this provoke. So, this means this champion needs accuracy. That's two things. So, initially, you thought it's just defense, you needed it out this champion. It turns out you also need accuracy on him. Now, if you do not care about this provoke, if you do not care about this decrease attack that he's going to place, then you don't need to put accuracy on this champion. That's it. So it depends on where you want to use him. But again, every content out there needs provoke, at least for the waves. And if every content out there, even the bosses, also needs decrease attack. <laughs> so it's kind of hard to say, don't put this champion in accuracy. So for my build, yes, I decided to give him enough accuracy to land this provoke at least. So that's something you should also consider. Now for the A2, this one also places a stun, so also something that has needs accuracy. But that's not what this A2 is known for. This A2 is known for placing this increased defense that lasts for 3 turns. So if increased defense is lasting for 3 turns, do you need to take that mastery that makes him add an extra turn to the increased defense? That's one thing you should consider when you put selecting masteries. You know, there's a master that says, you know, increase the, um, it has a chance of increasing the number of um, the turns on a buff that you place. So on his A1, he has a 20% chance of decreasing the duration of buffs. I mean, yes, buff on the enemies. Considering, the, considering this chance is very low, 20% chance of decreasing the duration of buffs on enemies. And then this also has a low chance of landing. This champion will require that mastery that allows you to add an extra 5% chance of doing stuff, either from artifacts or from um, his skills. So that's what I'm thinking. The A1 and this A3 will make me select that mastery. So judging by how defensive based he is and how he's more of a support unit for your um, team, I decided to build this champion to full support that means i did not go to the offense tree at all now while i'm building why i'm explaining it like this because 
you might want crit, da- crit rate on this champion 100%. You might want 200 crit damage on this champion. Putting crit rate on this champion and putting crit damage on this champion will mean that you will lose out on some defense. Yes. I wanted him to have the highest amount of defense that I can get and that means sacrificing crit rate, sacrificing crit damage. So that means he will not do damage, we will test it and see. Alright, let me stop hyping it up, let me show you the artifacts, I was hiding it for some time. Here it is, that's my total stats, I'll show you the full window but let's talk about this artifact set, why I chose this one. Accuracy, perception set, two set and then this set that I've never used on any champion in the game. I might have used it as a broken set but he is the first champion that I went looking for this set. If you do not know resilience adds a 10% HP and a 10% defense. Now this might be an upgrade to this um, normal set that we have here, defense for 15%. But if you have enough of this defense set, of course you can put it on him. 15% for a two-piece set is awesome. I didn't have enough so it, it didn't come into my game i guess but if you have this one this might be a better set than resilient sets but nobody farms this one anymore so i'm kind of scarce on this one but i'm so i'm concerned if i finally get six piece set of this one his defense might go increasingly high so on the chest i do have defense of course gauntlet defense boot speed now if you want extra defense you might want to go defense on the boots if you want him to be slow but i don't want this champion to be slow remember he has a provoke you remember he also has to place increased defense on my team before they get nuked so he is not there to be slow and just give us his passive no he's also there to take action on the um banner i did go what did i go defense also so it's not a accuracy banner if you want him to land this more accuracy, of course, I'll just come in here, switch it to an accuracy banner and go beat the content. So I can always replace this banner to an accuracy one and the defense one, depending on the content that I want to beat. All right. Total stats. Boom. No crit rate. <laughs> I'm kind of really, really happy about this build because I have not seen a champion hit this amount of um, defense in my team. I don't have any champion that has this amount of defense. So that means it will be incredibly difficult to kill Ion Brago, of course, if he has enough HP. So I will, why did I build this champion in the first place? I was trying to use him for faction wars and I discovered some of his pieces were missing. And there is currently an artifact event that cuts 50% of your artifacts, I mean, 50% reduction in the cost of removing artifacts. So I was like, let me start rebuilding. Every champion that I come across this week in Racial Legends will re- get rebuilt. And Iron Brago is the first on my list. Crit damage, nothing to write home about. So like I said, I went to him to be a defense support role for my team with enough accuracy right there to land his provoke and um, also maybe decrease their buff. You might want to go crit rate and crit damage. I went the other way because I wanted to see a high amount of defense. Now, I already have champions in the game who are keeping my team alive, like Osoga, Osoga, Osoga the war caller, right? If you put Osoga with Iron Brago, what happens? Almost impossible to kill Osoga. So I'm looking to pair them together and you will see some of the runs that I'll do with them. Alright, I'm leaning more towards defensive based tank teams that will survive because of Doom Tower. Most of the time, you can't just come into Doom Tower and put your high damage dealing champions and expect them to nuke every wave. Doom Tower requires patience, requires you to have champions that can survive hits and, you know, throw the enemy teams till they finally die slowly <laughs> with, po- with poison or with um, HP burn. So that's where I'm building this champion for. He also has an aura for Doom Tower. Yes, that's what I f- forgot to mention. Increase allied defense in Doom Tower battles by 34. Now, I think there's somebody in the game that can do up to 40% Doom Tower aura, but his 34 is quite high. So, yes. For masteries, this is my clan boss masteries. <laughs> yes. So don't copy this master yet. This is clan boss masteries right here. So I'm going to be changing it right now to a defensive based support role mastery that I want him for. He's no longer having crit rate or crit damage, right? So 
I'm no longer using him for clan boss, therefore I'm out of the offense tree. Now, if you still want to use him for damage, you might want to go to the offense and select. I've seen some people select Hem Smasher. It makes him hit extremely hard if you have crit rate and crit damage on him. So, but I'm not going for that. I'm currently going for defense tree. I'll go for the one that decreases damage received from AoE. Let's see. Decrease damage by 10% if this champion has stun. I don't want this one. Increase the amount of healing and value of shield buff this champion received. So I'll be using this champion with maybe Brogni. So do I want to use this one? Maybe. It's better than this one because he will not be stunned or sleep a lot. He didn't say provoke. Decrease the damage received by 10% if this champion. Let me not waste your time by deciding the masteries. I'll be back with full masteries. Hold on. All right, I'm done selecting some of the masteries and I wanted to show you my decision on selecting the last one. Now, since I already have enough accuracy on this champion, I will not be going towards this area of adding 50 extra accuracy. Remember, I'm not looking to use him with high accuracy for um, high PvP. I mean, um, what do you call it? Platinum Arena. That's where you select these ones. Or I'm not looking to use him for Tom meter boosting so he doesn't need this either but this seems like a viable one for him so he can come around his turn either but what i'm really concerned about is his defense so that will bring me down to this defense tree that adds extra 200 defense now since i already have over 6000 defense right there what is 200 going to help me with i have enough already now if you're chilling around 4000 3000 defense that's when this one might help you go up a little bit but i'm already over the bar so i'm not going to be selecting this one instead i'm concerned about his debuff right chance of landing that um is it which one again i forgot the debuff i saw but he has the a1 and the a3 chance of landing it that would, the provoke i mean that would be increased by me selecting this one by five percent is huge five percent is huge so that will bring it for 75 percent to 80 percent chance of landing that provoke so that's why i'm selecting this one because i want him to be the target i want him to be the tank that's why i went this way i just wanted to explain it now on the accuracy three none of these three ones that are enticing to me so i'm just gonna select a random one especially this one because his decrease attack i guess will be increased by one ton extra on the enemies so i'm not interested in this one no is this one i'm this will increase the a1 but it will not increase the a3 chance of landing it doesn't increase provoke so i'm not interested in that one either so i'll be selecting this one instead and then maybe counter attack if he loses 25 percent of his max hp at least for pvp that's where he's going to lose 25 percent on pve he's not going to lose 25 percent of his max hp this one is um decrease the damage and ally received for the first hit this champion will receive that damage this might help for pvp but again i'm not building solely for pvp that team will not be able to be killed in one hit so he's already have Os osoga taking the damage he doesn't need that but you might want to select that one all right i'm going for i can decide this will help the a1 and this will help generally hmm. i think i'll go this way the a1 decrease attack will last for longer all right um that's my <laughs> masteries it's random i know but again this is not a clan boss build this is for doom tower hard all right it's time for us to take this champion into battle and see what he can do now that you've seen my build and my total stats and the way i decided to build him let's head over straight to what content is the easiest for us to just see the numbers i want to see the damage numbers first of all I want to see how many how much damage is being shown on the screen so we'll go to oh this is not i don't want to do a boss fight iron brago this is not he's not going to be having any aura to increase his defense in this battle there he is all right let's go and see the damage numbers first at least in the um, campaign and see what numbers that comes up on the screen 
Let me slow it down. 32k. No crit rates. 30k hits. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? No crit rate, no crit damage. These numbers are just the raw defense numbers that you're seeing. 39, the red numbers, that's a no crit rate, 27. So, do you need crit rate, crit damage on Iron Brago? Maybe. <laughs> but this is awesome. This is awesome to watch. This champion is literally unkillable. When he has the buff, it increases. So, yes, I'm satisfied with this build. So, <laughs> do I need to show him in other content for you to be satisfied with the build also? Do you really need to need me to run it through every content for you to see him do work? Yes. Let's put him in a team and take him into um, what's the easiest one for us to beat easily that will not take us too much time in the video. Let's go to Dragon. I guess that will show us real numbers i'm not doing the highest done that will take some time let me this, his negative affinity for dragon 20 so it be spirit affinity so let's go to 19 instead right yes i want to see those damage numbers to see if this is a viable build that i've done something nice that anybody can use now this is not his best place to put as aura who do i put as aura for him Let's just do Terrell, 25% increased defense. So if you have other defensive based champions, this might be the time for them to shine because of the way he does damage based on defense. So let me just bring in Lydia there just for the flex and off the weekend. Oh, that's not Lydia. This is Lydia. And what else? What else? What else? Any more defensive based champion? Yeah, I wanted to see Osaga, what they can do together. <laughs> this is a troll team. This is a troll team. So imagine putting this team into the arena. Yes, we'll also show this build in the arena to see how much damage you can do to some of those teams that think they can come in there and nuke your, your team. I don't think that would be possible with Iron Brago and his goons. Let me slow it down again so we can see the numbers. Decrease defense and weaken. Boom! 84k. This is no joke. Now I know some champions who can do 200k, 100k damage, but if for somebody who does not have crit rate and crit damage on him, these numbers are amazing. Honestly. 38k. So can he take another turn? Ah nah. So I'm really really satisfied with this build. This team will be extremely difficult to kill with him here that's a weak hit I want to see how much damage it does against the boss let me fast forward it because we've seen the wave it's interesting how my my account has moved from um, a lower level where I was doing few damage to now an end game account where I can actually build this high amount of defense so if you cannot if you cannot if you cannot get 6k defense on your iron brago 3000 works for clan boss 4000 works any amount of defense as long as you know it's your best amount of defense you see how he removed the turn on that unkillable or that block damage that that guy put on himself he cleared it with his a1 that's where that mastery that i selected comes in by increasing the chances from 20 to 25 percent so this champion should be booked. Yes, you get the most out of him if you book him. You can see him landing the decrease attack right there also because he had increased defense on him. So that decrease attack did land from Iron Brago, I think so. Let's see how much damage he does against the boss. Let's see him go. I don't want to see his A1 though. I want to see his big hits. Boom. That's 37k. So not that bad, not that bad. We'll end the run right there. Now, the most interesting one... One of the reasons I build him is Doom Tower, but I'm not going to show Doom Tower because that's Doom Tower hard and those runs take 20 minutes, 30 minutes. But yes, I'm going to be using him right there. He has enough accuracy and defense for that. The next place I want to show him is the arena. Because when people come across a team that has Iron Brago and other defensive based champion, they have to think twice if they have 5 to 10 minutes of their life to waste. That's the truth. Because when you see those teams, they have so much stats that you will not be able to kill them in one go. So this is a 
this is not a nook team this is a defense team because of revives are in there i want a team that can nook me all right we're in the arena and just an example of what really happens for a team like this um i don't have a defensive lead else i would have put it right there let's see um then what he brings to the team hopefully we, we can survive the first hit by the enemies and we don't get nuked in one go yes we gotta go first decrease defense and weaken they cannot debuff us and now let's see the damage numbers <laughs> I could have one shot that what was his name BEK if he didn't have his unkillable right there so yes my um, Iron Brango can one shot some Arena Nukas which is good news because you want to go against an offensive team with a, with a team like this so let me make sure they are not reviving anybody So, I know this is not an ideal team, but right now the arena is in a mess. It's hard to find uh, worthy opponents. But I just wanted to show an example of how much damage he also does in the arena, which is crazy. Let's test out the A3. And doom. It took a weak hit on Ninja, but... All right, <laughs> you get the point. You saw the numbers he did in the um, campaign. You saw the numbers he did in the dungeon. He's going to do similar numbers anywhere that you take him to. Unless enemies have some other um, debuffs on them or some other stuff. Anyways, I just wanted to highlight this Iron Brago build, my rebuilt one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hit that like, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and let me know how you built yours. I'll see you guys in another Red Shadow Legend video. Good night.